it's Eric Edmund again, and we've been deluged now by this so-called advice from the great and the good and the Yanks and everybody else, the EU, that we mustn't ever have a referendum on our membership of the EU because it would be jolly bad for us. Well, the truth is, of course, uh, it would be jolly good for us. And what these people are doing are simply, in the words of the city, talking their book. Let's kick off with the EU and Mr Van Rompuy. We pay a huge amount of money into the EU, something net. It's about uh, 8 to 10 billion euros, but if you look at the gross figure, it's twice that. It's about 20 billion euros. And the important thing is that's money which we lose control of and the EU spend it and take credit for it in this country on what they want to spend it on. And what they want to spend it on is promoting uh, the EU. And now we have Mr Van Rompuy telling us we mustn't, mustn't, mustn't leave the EU. Great. It's the same thing with Obama. The US was founded through a popular revolt against foreign rule. Most people in the UK actually admire the US Revolution and that particularly the US Constitution and the statements which were encompassed in that Constitution made by the Founding Fathers. And now it's so ironic. We have Obama telling us that the UK should be subservient to the EU. Just so what? Because it's an American interest. And what he means is because then the Americans will have a lobbyist in the EU to represent American interests. He was very quick to stigmatise BP, which he then insisted on calling British Petroleum during the uh, Gulf oil spill. And what we have here is nothing more than blatant American self-interest. I don't see why we have to lose our democracy to advance America, its sordid economic interests and its warlike tendencies. It is nonsense. Worst of all, however, we have the enemy within. We have the same sordid people who brought down Mrs Thatcher in 1991, uh, that is Heseltine, who stood against her and tried to knife her in the back and made it possible for Major to become the next PM. We have people like Kenneth Clark, uh, who actually is simply talking his book. He is a chairman, or was a chairman of a big tobacco company, it may have been Imperial Tobacco or British American Tobacco, and it's very characteristic that when these politicians and industrials talk about this, they are actually representing their own self-interest and their companies. None more so than Mr Branson Pickle himself, who says it will be disastrous if we leave the EU. Well, as I understand it, Mr Branson Pickle spends an awful lot of time in the West Indies. He doesn't even live in these countries. Then we have the head of WPP, Martin Sorrell, saying, oh, we mustn't, mustn't, mustn't leave the EU. Well, he was quick enough to depart from the London to Dublin with his company when he thought he was going to have to pay more tax on his foreign earnings. He's just like all multinational tax avoiders. He goes where it's best for his company. Now, that's the sort of people we just should not be listening to. They will get a huge amount of publicity on the BBC and the media generally, but they have no real interest in this country at all. This country belongs to the ordinary people. It belongs to firms that have been here and been doing business for many, many years. Not for multinationals who can pick up their sticks and go away, fold up their tents and depart to somewhere is better for them at the drop of a hat. And that, I think, is absolutely why we should not pay any attention to these people. That's going to be difficult because have, these people will get a huge amount of publicity. They have set up an organisation. They have lots of money, which will be their firm's money, of course. It won't be their money. No, no. And they will be promoting the stay in, get rid of the referendum idea non-stop. We must oppose it. We have to oppose it. We have to oppose it to save our country. So let's get on and do something about it. Thank you.